Chapter Twenty Four: How Ordinary People Make Extraordinary Income Online. Last Sunday morning, I got up, had a little breakfast, and drank some green tea before firing off an email that took me about fifteen minutes to write. Then I closed up shop and went shopping with my girlfriend for some new ties and new shoes. Sundays, after all, a day when people should rest. I even went to a black tie party later that night. All in all, it was a fantastic day, I must say. On Monday, when I got back to the office, I checked to see how many orders my email had generated. How about a whopping twenty-five thousand six hundred and eighteen dollars and seventy cents, all from one email? A simple message I wrote in fifteen minutes flat. And not bad for fifteen minutes of work, huh? I'm not telling you this to impress you, but to impress upon you that you can also create incredible success online with the help of the right knowledge and tools. Now, besides, if I don't toot my own horn, no one but me will ever know about my success, and as a result, I'll have zero credibility. First rule of business: toot that damn horn and tell the world how amazing you are. Now, I know some people would take this as nothing but a Arrogance or saying I'm braggadocious. Frankly, those people are losers. Winners will sit up and pay attention, while the losers get busy pointing fingers, judging me. Whatever. Honestly, I couldn't give a shit what losers think. I'm assuming that if you've made it this far in this program, you're sure as hell not a loser. I therefore am also going to make the assumption that you too would like to learn how to make money on the internet while you sleep, right? Good, because that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in the next few chapters. Making five figures a month online is really no big deal. Making six figures a month is one hell of a feeling, and seven figures a month, well, that's my goal. Maybe you're thinking, Dan, you can say things like making five figures a month online is no big deal because you're the man. But do real people actually make that kind of money? Here's the thing: it's not just true for me. I've helped thousands and thousands of average people make a fortune on the internet. It's not a matter of luck or being at the right place at the right time or any of that nonsense. One of the most recent successes is Charlie Cook, a marketing consultant to Fortune 500 companies, and his website is marketingforsuccess.com. Now, Charlie's passion lies in helping small business owners and marketing professionals. Discover a better way to attract clients and grow the business. Now, Charlie found me on the internet and enrolled into my mentoring program. When I started working with him, he was already successful, but he wanted to stop trading time for money as a consultant. Together, we turned his experience and knowledge into a line of educational products. So now people can buy his materials and do things for themselves. As a result, Charlie is now racking in half a million dollars a year online. Another one of my proteges is a photographer named Shane Gobert. Shane tried to use Photoshop to edit his photos, but he struggled to learn the program. He thought to himself, "Well, if I have this problem, I wonder if other photographers have the same problem." Then he launched ProPhotoSecrets.com, a membership site devoted to teach people. All the Photoshop tricks and tips. He since retired from the photography business and now makes a nice five-figure income every month working from home. This allows him to spend quality time with his seven-year-old daughter. He's now on track to build a multi-million-dollar internet company. I'm very proud of him. Another one of my success stories: Darren Lacroft, the owner of www.humor411.com. He's the guy to call when other professional speakers want to learn how to make their audience say "Wow." In 2001, Darren outspoke 25,000 contestants from 14 countries and became the world champion of public speaking. He now sells an enormous amount of products and services on the internet, and his website is racking in hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Of another protege, take Rob Palmer. A former struggling freelance writer, Rob started a website called GoFreelance.com from his basement and turned it into a multi-million-dollar company. His site is now one of the leading freelance sites on the internet. I can fill this entire book with 
success stories like these from my students. Which leads me to wonder how anyone can be lukewarm about the internet. How can anyone be skeptical or unconvinced that it is not only legitimate, but it is a damn smart way to make money while you sleep? From my experience, people are too skeptical of the internet fall into one of these three camps. Number one, people are too lazy to get off their ass and learn how the internet works. Number two, people who are afraid of change. These are the ones who don't want to stretch their comfort zones. People who are stuck in the rat race. They play not to lose instead of playing to win. Number three, people who believe other people can do it but not them. They say, "Well, I'm not a techie. I'm not a computer person. I'm too old for this." I can't really means that you actually can't. What it really means is I don't want to. I don't know how, or I'm too damn lazy. Nowadays, if your business doesn't have a website, you have zero credibility. It's almost mandatory, regardless of what business you're in. By having a simple, informative website about you and your product or service, you open an instant, free door to potential clients that you never had before. I can't think of a single business that can't benefit from being on the internet, and I don't care what business you're in. If you have an existing business, you can use the internet to either directly sell your products and services directly. Or educate and pre-sell your customers, or follow up with your existing customers, or provide quality information for your potential prospects so you build trust with them, or generate leads for your offline business. If your business is doing well offline, you can dramatically increase your sales and profits by building your presence on the internet. And if you don't have a business yet, the best place for you to start is on the World Wide Web. Is by far the cheapest advertising tool that you can have. Plus, you get to have a global exposure. More and more people research and make their purchases online. If they're looking for a new car, a new house, a new book, you name it, guess where they go? To the search engines. And when you learn how to harness the internet to give people what they are already searching for, you can make a fortune. The internet is not going away. If anything, it's going to grow bigger, better, and more lucrative. So get on the internet and get on now. Chapter twenty-five: How I went from wrecks to riches on the internet. To give you the nitty-gritty detail for what it takes to succeed online, I think it's important to tell you my story. So let me share with you how I got started. How I made my money, how I lost money, and how I have made my fu money on the internet. I figure out much of what I know now from the school hard knocks. In March of 1997, I was confused as hell. Like most people, I had no life direction. I wasn't sure what I wanted. By that point, I had experienced many business failures, and I was up to my eyeballs in debt. My self-esteem was low. Let me tell you, it was no fun waking up in the middle of the night, worrying about how I was going to pay my bills. I had read "Think and Grow Rich" by Napoleon Hill. Now, although I had done a lot of thinking, there wasn't enough riching. I had read "How to Win Friends and Influence People" by Dale Carnegie. I just didn't know how I could influence my friends to loan me money to pay my bills anymore. I did all the things that most people do, like. Buying self-help books and tapes, and going to seminars, and even walked on hot coals. I did all the things that the guru teaches: goal setting and positive thinking and affirmation and visualization, all that stuff. But most of those things just didn't work for me. I was still broke. I wasn't making enough money, and I certainly wasn't fulfilling my dream. That's when I made a discovery that changed my entire life's direction. I stumbled across a book in a used bookstore called Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. Now the title appealed to me because of all my business failures up until that point had boiled down to one problem: lack of customers. I bought the book for three dollars. I must have read it like ten times in a row. That book changed my life. The book revealed to me that there's actually a science to marketing and attracting clients. From that point on, I was hooked on this marketing stuff. I started buying all the marketing books I could get my hands on. 
I started studying ads and sales letters. I wanted to know what makes people tick, what motivates people to buy. Most people buy magazines to read the articles. I would buy magazines to read the ads. People would throw away their junk mail, and I read my junk mail before I even open my bills. In fact, I was getting all kinds of junk mail because I purposely ordered stuff from mail order companies so I could see the different types of offers and pitches I wanted to be sold to. And then one day I noticed that a guy by the name of Alan Jack kept sending me these sales letters, inviting me to various financial seminars in my city. Now his sales letters really stood out. They were powerful, they were compelling, and always filled with fascinating stories. Now Alan Jack knew how to craft a killer sales letter. He was a marketing genius. I kept all his letters in three-wing binders and found myself signing up for all the financial seminars he offered. When I was attending one of those seminars, I noticed a gentleman sitting next to me. Now, at first, I didn't pay much attention, but when I saw his name tag said Alan Jack, I was speechless. I thought to myself, could, 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 could this be the Alan Jack? It couldn't be. No way. And finally, I couldn't help myself, and I asked him nervously, uh, are you Alan Jack? Mm, yes, I am. Oh, my goodness. I I'm on your mailing list. I've been getting your letters. That's why I'm here. He said, good. I I'm glad you like the seminars. Alan thought I was referring to the seminar. I said, no, no, no. You don't understand. I mean, I love your sales letters. I love the way you sell and you market and you write. I actually keep all your sales letters and put them in three-wing binders to study them. Really? He looked surprised and flattered at the same time. You know, most people just throw them in a trash can. And I said, well, that's because they don't know the value of these letters. They don't understand it's not the thing. It's the thing that sells the thing. And he said, well, you're right, young man. You know, you're pretty, you're pretty bright for your age. There was a smile on his face. That's when I stepped out of my comfort zone and asked one of the smartest questions I've ever asked. I don't mean to impose, but can you buy your lunch? He thought about it and he said, Hmm, what the heck, I gotta eat. And he agreed. At lunch, we just clicked and Alan took me under his wings and became his apprentice. For a full year, I worked like a slave for not next to nothing. But I didn't care. I wasn't working for him to make money. I worked for him because I wanted to learn. That's when I found out that you could put words on a piece of paper, put it in an envelope, send it out, and then people would send you money. It was a revolutionary discovery for me. I was amazed, and I said to myself, this is the best way to make money in the world without a gun. And depending on how you look at it, it corrupted me forevermore. And here I was, a copywriter for his company. I would do all the grunt work write the letters, and, and then take the bags of envelopes to the postal office and mail them. I always refer the year that I worked for Allen was the million-dollar year of my life because I got a million dollars worth of education in that year. Finding a mentor to show me the ropes was the answer for me. Now, it may not be the answer for everybody, but that was the answer for me. So literally, my life was changing in a few months because I had learned to turn words into cash. By October 2000, I was making a six-figure income as a professional copywriter. Now, not bad for a guy who was broke a couple years ago. huh? I wrote copy for a lot of best-selling authors, speakers, and various small businesses. I learned a ton about marketing and business because I got a first-hand look inside many successful and not-so-successful businesses. When you're writing sales copy for clients, it naturally leads to consulting. They'll often ask you, well, how should I mail these letters? Who should I mail them to? How do I follow up? So giving them a sales letter without a strategy is like giving them a computer without telling them how to use it. But I felt like an imposter because although I was a damn good copywriter, I was no master of business success. In fact, unbeknownst to my clients, I was a master of business failures. So I got obsessed and started studying as much as I could about business, sales, leadership, management, and finance. In addition, I had the privilege 
of learning from my clients and my mentors, eventually I got a grip of what I was doing and I began consulting with different entrepreneurs successfully. So here I was running a successful consulting and cooperating business. New clients were finding me and old clients were hiring me repeatedly. I raised my fees substantially, but it still didn't seem to scare people away. As a copywriter, my sales letters had generated tens of thousands of dollars in revenue for my clients. I made them rich and happy. People seem to develop warm feelings for you when you make lots of money for them. <laughs> so business just kept coming and money was rolling in and things were good. Well, sort of. But by 2003, I hit a plateau. I had no idea how I could increase my income without working harder. I realized I was simply a high-paid slave swapping hours for dollars. Now, at first it was fun, even thrilling. But it didn't take long for me to feel trapped inside this so-called successful business. I wanted out. So one day I was approached by a webmaster who told me, Well, Dan, you should get a website. And I said, well, I don't know. Like, I'm getting enough clients just from word of mouth. What do I need a website for? Well, you know, maybe you can sell a product on the internet or something like that. Hmm. And I wonder, huh, what can I sell? Then I got an idea. You know, what if I put some of the most important lessons that I had learned up to that point about making money and marketing and psychology into a book form? What if I sold that on the internet? So I pounded out a book called Forbidden Psychological Tactics. It contained 27 psychological tactics that marketers and companies use to motivate and persuade people to open their wallets and buy. I made 100 copies at $5 a pop and started selling them for $19.95 plus shipping and handling on the internet. So I was basically making 15 bucks per copy. Now, at the time, I had no idea how to set up a website or anything like that, so I paid the web guy 500 bucks to set it up for me. Now, on that site, I had my phone number so people could call me and place an order, or they could send checks to my address. I couldn't accept credit cards or anything like that back then. Now, looking back, I can't believe how stupid I was, making it so damn difficult for people to buy from me. If you have a website, people want to buy, and they want to buy now. So if you want to maximize your sales, you have to take credit cards. So here I was making people jump through hoops. Anyway, about 20 days later, I got a check in the mail from someone from California ordering my book. I couldn't believe it. I picked up the phone and called the guy and he said, yeah, you know, I saw your web page. I thought your book looks interesting. So please send me a copy. Wow, this is amazing, I thought. So I started going to different forums and talking about my book. And boom, I got more checks and more phone calls from people wanting to order my book. Orders were coming in from all over the world. The second order was from uh, Dallas, Texas. The third from Toronto, Ontario. There was even one from Australia. They sent me checks and money orders. And yet, I had never talked to them or met them face to face. I just deposited the checks and shipped the books to them. No fuss, no muss. Within three months, I had sold 100 copies of Forbidden Psychological Tactics. My entire inventory was gone and I had made $1,500 in profits. Now you might say, but Dan, it's only $1,500. bucks. What's a big fucking deal? Well, you don't understand. I knew that if I could make $1,500 doing it part-time, I wonder how much I could make if I do it full-time. And what would happen if I devote more energy to it? I could probably double or triple that amount. This could be huge. This is my ticket. Then I stumbled across the late Corey Rudo's website. He, at the time, he offered a program called the Insider Secrets to Marketing Your Business on the Internet. That spoke to me. I coughed up the money for his this massive course, hundreds of pages of content, and there was one particular chapter in the program in which uh, Corey talked about selling digital products on the internet. It was basically about creating books in digital format and making them available for download. So you didn't even have to ship anything. You kept more of the money. And damn, why did I think of that? There was one problem. In order for me to do that, I knew I must accept credit cards on my site. 
to apply for a merchant account and got turned down because they couldn't understand what I was selling. The banks had no idea what an ebook was. To apply for another merchant account and got turned down. I was starting to get a little bit discouraged. Finally, after eight rejections, I got a merchant account. Now I could accept payments on the internet. Yeehaw! So I immediately called up my web guy and had him turn my book into an ebook. Now, in case you don't know what an ebook is, an ebook is an electronic book that you can read digitally on your computer or laptop screen. Not only that, but I bumped the price to twenty nine dollars and ninety five cents, and now I would have no shipping cost and no printing cost. All I have is the credit card fee, so therefore I kept ninety five percent of the profits. As my excitement for this internet business grew, my desire to work with cooperating clients one on one decreased dramatically. I would rather focus on minding my own business. I knew I need to develop more products, so I got busy creating and marketing numerous new ideas. Many of them flopped. Some projects were breaking even, but a handful of them were huge winners. That's the great thing about business: one big win can make up for a lot of losses. I continue to try different things and make mistakes and learn from other people. So my sales went from fifteen hundred bucks a month to twenty five hundred dollars a month to six thousand dollars and then ten thousand dollars a month. Then it kind of got stuck at ten thousand a month. And then someone told me that I needed to build a list. I thought okay, so I started an e newsletter called Dan's Rant. When I started building my list, I had only maybe a dozen subscribers. And that included my girlfriend and my friends and my cousins, but it grew and grew. In fact, today I have over fifty thousand people on Dan's Rant as my subscribers. And then one day I just decided that I would no longer write copy for anyone else. I fired all my copywriting clients in one day. Now talk about brass balls here. I called them and told them, "I'm so sorry, you are a great client, and thank you for your support." We have had a great business relationship, but I can no longer write for you because I'm going to pursue my new business ventures. So I want to call and thank you. There was no turning back. I had burned a ship and put myself into a financial crisis. Now looking back, that turned out to be one of the riskiest yet one of the best decisions I've made. That same year, I made a huge investment into a software that I plan to market to network marketers. The programmer basically ripped me off and overcharged me. Even after I had paid him tens of thousands of dollars, he hadn't done a damn thing. When I found out, it was too late. He took my money and disappeared. That same year, I started five websites, and they all failed. I lost almost all the money I had made from my initial internet boom. I found quickly that motivation is good, but desperation is even better. Now I really had to dig deep and see what I was made of. I started really analyzing what worked and what didn't. Why didn't certain things work? What new skills do I need to develop in order to make this internet business successful? So I started developing a set of principles and philosophies to making money on the internet. These are fundamentals, not the latest gimmicks or tricks. Fundamentals are everything. While fads come and go. In martial art, I've learned that an amateur is someone who knows a thousand moves, but practice each move one time. A master is someone who knows only a few moves, but practice each move thousands of times. The same concept applies to business. If you aren't getting the results that you want, if you backtrack, you will see that the cause is that you aren't using the fundamentals to online business success. And I'll share these fundamentals with you in just a minute. And they are surprisingly simple but profound. So then I launched a piece of software called Instant Cash Copy, which helps business owners crank out killer ad copy without hiring an expensive copywriter. It became an instant bestseller and is still one of my best-selling products. In the meantime, I started developing more high-end educational products such as home study programs and manuals and CDs. With a combination of good traffic generation tactics, good products, and killer copy, my business took off in a hurry. I was now back on my feet. My sales in the month of March 2005 reached twenty thousand dollars. I had doubled my previous record of ten thousand. I thought I was something special. I got to tell you, 
I really thought there was a lot of money. A few months later, I coordinated with a group of joint venture partners and did a product launch that generated over one hundred and one thousand six hundred and ninety-four dollars in twenty-nine days. I took a lot of that money and started other internet businesses in various niches. I began to outsource a lot of the tasks and started building a powerful team. Armed with my experience and skills, I was able to dominate niche markets and multiply my income very quickly. In 2005, I ended the year doing $467,096.92 in sales. By 2006, I became a millionaire. I doubled that figure in 2007. I doubled that again in 2008. Now I won't even tell you how much money I make this year because you probably won't believe me. Not that I care what you think. Now, did it happen overnight? No. Was it easy? No. Was it worth it? Absolutely. In fact, would you believe that my most successful student is doing better than me? He's making twenty million dollars a year online. And that's how powerful the internet is. Chapter twenty-six: The Seven Golden Keys to Internet Riches. In order to create internet wealth, you must follow certain disciplines. You must think a certain way, and you must continue to repeat a set of profit-producing guidelines over and over and over again. Golden key number one: the market comes first. The market you sell to you is more important than the products or services that you sell. The number one reason people fail is because they spend so much time creating the perfect product without even knowing if there's a market for what they offer. Big mistake. The absolute key. To your internet success, any time you decide to begin any money-making project online, is effective market research. Remember, people don't buy from you because they understand what you sell. They buy from you because they feel understood. Too many times I've been guilty of making that mistake. In the beginning of my marketing career, I had a whole lot more losing business ideas than winners. However, as I've refined my market research techniques over the years, my rate of success has improved exponentially. As a result, I've enjoyed a drastically improved income as well. Research your market, and find out what people want and are willing to buy, not what you think they might buy, not what you think they should buy, but what they are actually spending money on already. Ask yourself. Is the market already buying something similar to what I'm thinking of selling? Is this a market where people buy, or is this a market of people who have no money and are looking for something free? Is the market big enough? Are there existing partners in the market I can join venture with? Am I able to reach these buyers? Am I going to be able to drive traffic to my website and get them to buy my products? Start with a topic that has a future to it. A lot of internet entrepreneurs fail because they choose a niche without a lot of backend potential. They choose a niche that doesn't have legs to stand on its own, and won't support additional selling opportunities beyond the first sale. Start with a market that has a viable future to it. Identify niches where people have money. And are used to spending it on products within that niche. For example, golfers. People who are into golf are fanatical about improving their game, and they are willing to plug down a good chunk of change to buy the latest gadgets, read the latest books, watch the latest videos. You name it, just to shave one stroke off their score. Sell something that's already proven to sell. If you want to find out where money's being made. Look no further than where money is being spent. Golden key number two: Create a simple, easy to navigate website that sells. Do you know what the single biggest mistake that most websites make? They are not designed to sell. If you want to strike it rich online, it's crucial 
that everything on your website is geared to do one thing and one thing only, to sell. Here's where most people always go wrong. If your website doesn't sell, if it fails to convert visitors into customers, then it doesn't matter if you have the greatest products in the world. It doesn't matter how professional your website looks or how high your rankings are in the search engines. It doesn't matter how much traffic you drive to your website. None of this stuff means shit if your website doesn't sell. Period. Now maybe you want to sell flowers online or eBooks or your company's image or have a membership site. Anything else you can think of, the bottom line is the same. You are selling. Your website is not a brochure. You should think of your website as a 24/7 virtual salesperson. Your website must sell, and it must do so with laser sharp precision. Once a visitor hits your site, you only have one shot at making that sell. That's it. There's no second chance. Every part of your website, from the sales copy to the buttons to the navigation structure, should be built to get your virtual cash register. Ringing again and again. Golden key number three: build a business, not a money maker. I learned this one the hard way. That was always after the quick money deals. So I started a bunch of mini sites, which were supposed to be push a button and make a bunch of money, and I made good money, but not f you money. I was building a money maker instead of a business. Don't make the same mistake that I did. That's just not how you build long-term wealth. A business has assets, customer lists, products, and a brand. Those are your assets. Poor people focus on making money. Rich people focus on building and creating assets that make you money. Little distinction, big difference. Golden key number four. Create multiple income streams in one business. Don't create many diversified businesses. Building multiple streams of income has been popularized by various financial gurus. It's a very powerful concept. It's basically saying don't have all your eggs in one basket. If one source of your income dries up, you can always fall back on another stream of income. You stand a good chance of building wealth this way. A lot of people misunderstand the concept. For entrepreneurs, trying to make money with ten different businesses is a disaster. It's total confusion. What you really want is multiple streams of income within one business, focused floods of income coming from one place. This way, you stand the best chance of succeeding. You'll never reach staggering success by having a million little things going on. Sell to one market and serve the needs of one group of targeted people. Look, I understand that opportunity is everywhere on the internet. Believe me, I know I have the entrepreneurial ADD too. I'm never short of great ideas, but trust me on this one. Instead of jumping from one market to another, chasing down every idea you ever come up with, and driving yourself crazy in the process, I suggest. You squeeze as much money as you can out of the one market. Exhaust every avenue there is for making money within your current market, and you're virtually certain to make more money than you ever would by jumping from one market to the next. Offer multiple products for your customers to buy. Find multiple sources of traffic to drive to your website. The longer you are in a market, the more you begin to understand the buyers in that market. The more money you make, create as many ways of making money as you possibly can from your one initial market. Sure, I have multiple businesses in multiple markets because I have systems in place. I have other partners in those niches, and I've created a model that I can replicate. But I started with one market. I suggest you do the same. Make one thing as big as you can. Before you move on to something else, give it your all, and you'll make five to ten times more money. Golden key number five: leverage the time and resources of others. You only have so many hours in a day. Even if you don't sleep, there's still just twenty-four hours a day. 
you will never be able to work 25 hours in a single day. So how do you make more money in your business, regardless of what stage it is currently, if your time is limited? You must leverage the time of others. Outsourcing has made me a multi-millionaire. I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't harnessed the power of delegating work to others. Now don't get me wrong, I work. But to me, my work isn't work. I love what I do. I love my products, my customers, and growing my businesses. And whatever I don't like, I outsource and delegate to others. It becomes their jobs, not mine. At the same time, I take a lot of time to play. I only work four days a week, and when I do work, I don't work nearly as hard as people who make peanuts compared to me. Compared to the construction worker across the street, I'm a lazy bum. Working with a shovel is back-breaking work. And even if you were to compare me with the average doctor or lawyer or accountant who works harder, they will still win. In case anybody wonders, I'm not a techie. I don't know any programming. I don't know HTML. I don't do JavaScript. Frankly, my time is much more valuable than that. I'm the least bit interested in doing that nerd code stuff. I can easily go to elance.com or guru.com and find someone to do this stuff for me. If you want to maximize your profits, you must start outsourcing. One of the greatest feelings you'll ever have in your life, as it pertains to your business, is when you have finally learned to pay other people to do those things in your business that you don't enjoy doing so that you can free up your time to do only those things you really want to do. And when you do, eventually you get to a point where your business is like mine. That's very little that I do in regards to the day-to-day -day operation of my business. Golden key number six, use your personality to sell. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. All of your communication with your customers should be personal and friendly. Right the way you talk, communicate one-on-one, -on -one, not one-to-many. People trust and believe other people far more than they trust corporations. Corporations are big, uncaring, and unbending. On the other hand, people are typically friendly and caring. Stand out. Don't blend in. Be interesting, high energy, exciting, and entertaining, not boring and plain. Always be genuine and authentic. Figure out who you really are, your core principles and your personality, and then use that in everything you do. Don't be afraid to tell your story. Share your successes and failures. Reveal your flaws. Why? Facts tell, stories sell. Can you create an emotional story to wrap around your product or service? Think to yourself, where were you before? Where are you now? Why do you do what you do? Guess who? I was alone, I was broke, I was overweight, I was living in a one-bedroom apartment. I've read more than 700 books in the area of personal development and success. One day, I decided that my life would change and never again would I settle for anything less than what I ultimately desire and envision for my life. I started applying all that I've been learning from books tapes, and seminars, and within one year, I turned my whole life around. I became a millionaire in less than one year. I live in a mansion. I put what I've learned in a bunch of tapes, and now I want to show you how to change your life for the better. Whose story is it? Tony Robbins. Guess who? I had two dads. One dad was highly educated and intelligent. He had a PhD. My other dad never finished the eighth grade. Both men were successful in their careers, working hard all their lives. Both earned substantial incomes. Yet one dad struggled financially all his life, while the other dad would become one of the richest men in Hawaii. At the age of nine, I decided to listen to and to learn from my rich dad about money. In doing so, I chose not to listen to my poor dad, my real dad, even though he was the one with all the college degrees. I achieved financial independence at the age of 47, 
and I want to teach you the same secret my rich dad taught me. Whose story is it? Robert Kiyosaki. What do these men have in common? They have built their entire business empires around a story. Personality-driven marketing means developing a persona, be who you are, but amplify it. Golden key number seven: position your business for automatic growth. As you grow your business, you must position your business in as many ways as possible to automatically make money for you. There is inexpensive technology available to you for running your business that's very powerful. Harness this technology and use it to your advantage. For example, you can deliver valuable content over time with sequential autoresponder messages sent to your customers' or prospects' email inbox. Another example is building your mailing list 24/7 with a prominent opt-in box and a compelling offer. If you already have a business online that's making you money, determine exactly what steps you took to get that money. Identify the core activities responsible for making. You money, then use technology or people or system to repeat those process again and again. This piece of advice has made me a lot of money. Do more of what works instead of trying to fix what's broken. Keep doing the things that have brought you the most money, but focus on fine tuning the system so you can duplicate and multiply the results. Automate your business as much as possible. I was on the phone the other day with my uncle, and we were just chatting about family as usual. And he said, "Dan, you you still doing that internet shit?" I said, "Yes." When are you gonna get a job like everybody else? Um, never. <laughs> See, he just doesn't get it, and he'll never get it, and that's okay. Most of your friends and family won't understand what you do and and how you make your money anyway. So just shut up and. Make the money and well, or buy them something nice. The internet can provide a business that will truly give you the lifestyle, the money, the time, the freedom, and everything else you want. I really don't think I could find a business that's better than an internet business. It's the perfect f you money business. If you're committed to making money online, and you can and you will, it's never too late to start. So what the hell do I do now? If you've listened to this far, you've had a pretty damn good dose of Dan. A lot of people, when they listen to a program like this, get all jazzed up and psyched up and motivated. But then they ask themselves, "Where should I start? Exactly what is the next step?" With a few money, I set out to create a different kind of business and success audio program. One that address lifestyle choices as well as money issues. I've read so many books that give you good ideas, but they come up short by not telling you exactly what to do next. You get excited about the ideas, but life ultimately remains the same. You don't get the results you want. In fact, you would have been better off not reading the damn books at all because they simply left you confused. So when I started out, I said to myself. I'm not going to do that. If I was going to create a program, I was going to do it my way, the Dan Lok way. In the introduction, I told you that you wouldn't find all the answers in this program. I said you would find some of them, but not all of them. I created this program to give you the tools and strategies to find the freedom and the answers you've been searching for. I wanted my words and my voice to compel you to think differently, to find a different and better way to live your life. As you can see, I've tried to deliver my message in the most frank and no holds barred way possible by talking about my successes, my failures, and my flaws, well, as well as some of the mistakes I've made and the lessons I've learned. I've tried to do it in plain language, not in some academic mush. I hope you've enjoyed the result. During our journey together, I know sometimes I can be in your face, and that's just the kind of mentor that I am. 
but at least by now you understand what FU Money really means. It's more than just an audio program. It's a new way of doing business. It's a new way of thinking. It's a new way of living. And now it's up to you to take action. It's up to you to apply these strategies and techniques into your life. These ideas are only as good as you make them. They won't do a bit of good unless you take action. Now, I know some of you will listen to this program and put it down and not do a damn thing with it in your own life. You may even tell some of your friends about it, but you won't take the necessary action to change. It will just become another program that you cross off your reading list. I don't want this to happen to you. Change is difficult. I know. The biggest thing that stops us from making the FU money is that we think we can do it alone without any help. We think we don't need to be accountable to anyone. That's a big mistake. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? You might say, I'm committed to making my FU money, but are you really committed? If so, realize this. Commitment with no formal structure is really no commitment at all. Here's what I mean. Let's say you wanted to lose weight. You might say to yourself and to those around you, I'm committed to losing weight. But the fact is, if you don't schedule your exercise time, maintain a proper diet, or get a personal trainer, in other words, some sort of formal structure in place, then I know you're not committed losing weight. And that's why I've developed a variety of specific programs and resources to help you make your FU money faster and easier while having more fun than you can imagine. To gain access, all you have to do is log on to my website at www.fumoney.com. I have created an online community, an extensive website to be your FU Money Resource Center. You can go there and join an entire community dedicated to the FU Money philosophy. And now, one more thing before I go. Your countdown has begun. Now you have no reason not to get off your butt and do something. Get moving. You see, there is now a countdown running that you weren't aware of. Now that you've completed this final chapter, the clock has started ticking. Here's the thing. If you don't take some sort of small action towards the FU money within 24 hours, I believe it's almost guaranteed you will never take any action towards the FU money. With every passing second that you don't take action, this program comes closer and closer to becoming yet another program on your shelf, doomed to collect us among all those other volumes you've wasted money on. And that's a shame. In a way, it would be even worse than if you would never listen to this program at all. And now that you have listened to this program, you can no longer say to yourself, I don't know how.